Okay, hi, I'm Michael DeRosa, and I'm the Visual Art Director at Coffeeville Community College. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, linear perspective. This is one of the rules or the, uh, of the, or the science that came out of the Renaissance, the early part of the Renaissance. There was a man named Filippo Brunelleschi. Uh, he was an architect, he was a sculptor, he was an engineer, and uh, he really, his real passion was to be a sculptor. He entered some competitions, basically just kind of summarizing his life experiences, entered some competitions for sculpture, uh, got beat out by some better sculptors in the competitions, and so then he turned to architecture. Uh, he was pretty much uh, imperative as far as uh, defining what architecture would be of the Renaissance and when he was discovering what those uh, new Renaissance architectural ideas would be, he went back to Greece uh, and Rome and he was studying the ruins of those earlier civilizations. When he was studying those civilizations, he was sketching the buildings and he happened upon what became known as linear perspective. And so he was the one that introduced that idea. It is a science, meaning that it's measurable and uh, I'm going to show you today what we now call one and two point perspective. So we'll start off with one point perspective and you do have to have what is called a horizon line. That will be a line that simply defines, uh, divides the picture plane. And so I'll be working on this paper here and I'll just hold it up so you can see that it's just plain paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line across the paper and without getting into another science of the Renaissance or talking about it in depth, I'll just tell you I'm going to use the, utilize what is known as the rule of thirds to divide my composition. And uh, we'll save that for another day. And so I'll draw a line which is roughly in the top one third mark. Uh, this will serve as what is known as the horizon line. The rules of mechanical perspective are is that vertical lines always remain vertical and all other lines that have the illusion of receding in space shall converge to one single point. And so that single point is no, known as the horizon line, I mean known as the vanishing point. That vanishing point can be anywhere on the horizon line that I choose. And so it's just, I'll just randomly put a, a dot over here. And so this is now on my horizon line and will serve as a vanishing point. To do the illustration of it, just to keep it simple, I'm going to draw a series of boxes just in what we will, uh, a series of boxes going back in one point perspective. And so I will start off, the rules of mechanical perspe perspective are is that vertical lines always remain vertical and horizontal lines always remain horizontal. And so we're just going to start off at drawing what will be the front view of the box. And so they have the two sides established on one box. I'll put a baseline on this box. And so that'd be the bottom edge of the box. And then I'll put another line on the top. And so now I just have basically a, a rectangle that's just kind of randomly uh, devised. And so all other lines that define this box, except for the back sides and top, uh, are going to be going back to the vanishing point. So I'll start off with this corner and line up my straight edge to the dot that I put on my horizon line and we will draw that back to the vanishing point. I'll start off on the upper left corner of the box and line it up to my vanishing point. And then I will go to the upper right hand corner of the box, line up the corner to my vanishing point, and I will draw it back. Now my box is established, it is in a one point perspective. If I want to put a, the ending to the box somewhere, I can choose anywhere I want. I'll just randomly choose about right here to end the box. And so that line will serve as the back part of the box. And then I will draw another line that goes across. It needs to be parallel to the top of the box here. And now I have a complete box that's drawn in one point perspective. 
If I want to be creative with this, I could uh, do a little bit of shading, like if I invented the light source over here. So we'll just say the sun is over here. And so that would mean the light is coming in this way. Then, so the top of the box is going to receive light. And then so I could take my pencil here and I could shade this side. And I could start to make this box seem more three-dimensional. This is getting into another lecture about values. But we'll just make, make the box seem a little bit more three-dimensional. And so I'm inventing a light source. I'm not really looking in direct observation at something, which is the best way to draw. But if you want to invent space, invent the illusion, uh, you can do it this way. And so once uh, Filippo Brunelleschi invented mechanical perspective, it took off kind of like a fever in the early part of the Renaissance. <clears throat> and you had lots and lots of different artists that started incorporating it into the use of making their artwork. The downside to, to linear perspective is that it only works with, well, I can't say it only works, but it works best with things that have uh, a strong ge uh, geometrical shape to them. And so it's hard to do things like ellipses or circles or organic things, like if you're trying to draw a tree or a person, it's really hard to draw a person in one point perspective. And so this side of the box is going to be in the strongest shadow because it's the opposite of the light source, of the invented light source of the sun that I drew up there. And then this side of the box would be uh, a little bit lighter. And so we'll give it a lighter value. And I'm just using a, I'm using what's called an ebony pencil, which is a very soft lead. And so it gives you a nice range of tones. And then everything gets a cast shadow, so I'll give my box a cast shadow. And now I have a box that's drawn in one point perspective. And so this is what this would look like. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> if you want to be creative with this, you could draw a series of boxes and you could put windows in them, put more boxes inside the box and rectangles and you could have this turn this box into a building or whatever you want to be creative with. Uh, there's another aspect to mechanical perspective which is called two-point perspective. Um, we'll go ahead and leave this one out here I guess and I'll show you the rules of two-point two perspective and so it's just like one-point perspective you have to have a line that serves as a horizon line what the horizon line means, that's where the sky uh, meets the ground. And so I'll have to draw another horizon line. The rules are fairly similar to, mechanic, uh, to one point perspective and two points, except you have to have two vanishing points. And so these vanishing points, whatever object I'm going to draw in two point perspective, it has to be on the inside of the vanishing points. So I'm going to put my vanishing points on the outside or towards the outside edge of the piece of the paper. If I wanted to, I could actually extend them off the paper over here if I wanted to make sure I could fill the whole composition here. So I just put my horizon line on the upper one-third mark of the paper. The rules of two-point perspective are that vertical lines always remain vertical. All other lines have the illusion of, of receding to one or two of the vanishing points. And so to draw the same type of box, I'll start off with what would be the corner of the box here. And so it'll be that corner. And so it's just, I'm just gonna make a vertical line. And then I have to establish somewhere where the box is going to end, or the height of the box and the bottom edge of the box. And all other lines are going to be converging to one or two of the vanishing points. And so, this side of the box will go back to the vanishing point on my right. 
And then I already have the top of the box established, so I'll start with the top of the box and go to the vanishing point again on my right. And then the, the box is going, the left side of the box will be, I'll start with the top here and go to the vanishing point on the left. And then we'll start off at the bottom and we'll draw that back to the vanishing point on the left. And then again, vertical lines always remain vertical. So just kind of eyeballing my first box I drew in one point perspective. I will say this box is going to end about right here. So it's just an intuitive guess. Where the top is, uh, corner is established on the left hand side of the box, that will establish the top of the box. And so it, that line, being it's not a vertical, has to go to one or two vanishing points. So it will go back to the vanishing point all the way on the right. And then I have to guesstimate where this side of the box will be. In my box I drew in one point perspective, the front of the box is now shifted over here. So it's kind of shifted about 60 degrees or 30 degrees. And I'm going to say that this side ends here. So I just made a vertical line. Now the top of my box is established here and it will go back to that vanishing point. And so, uh, I'll draw a line there and now I have a box that's in two-point perspective same box I drew there if I want to give this a little bit of depth I can also put my light source here we'll just say this is the Sun coming in this side and so there's my light source this side again will remain in the darker shadow so I have to give it a shadow So I'll just kind of quickly shade that in. And the same thing goes with a two-point perspective. It works really well with geometric shapes that have predictable edges. If it's organic in nature where there are irregular shapes like trees and things of that nature, again, it's, it's uh, fairly difficult to draw a tree in mechanical perspective or linear perspective. But this is a science, it is measurable, and so and it allows for anyone to follow the rules. And so whether you think you can draw or not, uh, if you use the vanishing point, have a horizon line and you follow the rules, vertical lines always remain vertical. And if it's one point perspective, all lines that have the illusion of receding in space shall converge to that one single point. Again, that point's called the vanishing point. It has to work. It's not whether it can work or it might work, it has to work. And so anybody can learn to do this. And you're guaranteed success. This side will have a little bit less shadow because some of this light should be hitting this side. give this as it goes into this corner just a little bit darker value and that's probably the way the light would really be the side catching more light so it'd be a little bit lighter I'm gonna go ahead and make this edge a little bit crisper And then everything gets a cast shadow. And so I'm going to give a cast shadow to our box. And 
And <clears throat> here's an example of how to draw a box in two-point perspective. And so again, just like in one-point perspective, I could put some more rectangles in there. I could invent what would be a doorway, and I could easily turn this box into a building or whatever it is I wanted to. All right, thank you, and uh, I appreciate your time.